I've been running the Bontech LGX in my Voron V2.4 for the past week or so, and I've done an assortment of prints in several different materials. So let's go ahead and take it out of the printer and put it on the workbench and take a closer look at it. Now, as you can see from taking it out of my printer here, that the installation for the Bontech LGX in a Voron afterburner tool head is relatively straightforward. In fact, it's only two printed parts to make the stock Bontech LGX with the direct feed afterburner tool head. It lines up almost perfectly on the X and Y axis when it comes to the filament feed path and bar of a slightly longer Bowden tube is a direct drop in with the current afterburner tool head. So if you are running a Voron printer with an afterburner tool head and you want to use the Bontech LGX, it is a very simple installation. Now the Bontech LGX comes in a pretty Spartan box Inside we have the extruder itself, an adapter. Now the manual covers the different variations of the Bontech LGX. You can get it with adapters for different hot end assemblies. If you do plan to mount it in say a Voron afterburner, the stock setup with the Bowden tube adapter only is all you need because it simply takes a printed adapter. The manual also covers things such as the recommended step rate and motor current that you should be running the motor at. Now starting off with the outside of the extruder, we can notice a few things that make it a little bit different than most other compact extruders of this style. The first thing is the latch arm. Now the latch mechanism on the Bontech is different compared to most. On the BMG and on the clockwork, for example, we have an adjustable tensioning arm. On older, simpler styles like this one here that comes with the Creality Ender 3, we have an adjustment screw, and again, it's just spring tension. The BQH2 here, for example, is spring tension, but no adjustability at all. On the LGX though, we have this swing arm that ratchets. I really like this setup. The only thing I really don't like about it is how much it actually sticks out above the extruder. I wish it was a little bit shorter. But this adjusts your tension on the filament between the feed gears from all the way open to full tension. Now, one thing I really like about this setup is repeatability is super simple. So if the filament you're feeding, you find out works really good at three clicks. Whenever you open it up, take the filament out, put another filament in. You just go to three and it's exactly the same tension. You don't have to sit there and kind of adjust a spring where you, you, you don't really know where you're at. You're kind of eyeballing it. With this, you have consistent repeatability. So I do really like this throw arm for tensioning. Another thing I like is it does have the manual ability to feed filament through the gears, but both drive gears are fully exposed. So if your drive gears start getting gummed up, you're grinding filament, you, you know, you're trying to cold extrude or something, something goes wrong and you, you know, fill these gears up with plastic and you want to clean them out, you can do that manually by spinning it and cleaning it without having to disassemble the whole extruder assembly. That is something different compared to the BQH2, for example, and the Hemera. Both those, the gears are fully contained within the enclosure. With this, they peek out of the sides of the body of the extruder. So I do like that. Now, when it comes to mounting your hot end, you do have some options. The variant I have here comes with an adapter plate for a mosquito. So if I wanted to run this extruder with a mosquito attached, I would simply bolt the extruder to this mounting plate, attach it back in, and then I would have a compact solution for filament extrusion. Now, personally, I'm not a huge fan of these all-in-one extruder hot end combos, simply for the fact that it really limits you on how you can mount this in your printer. So I'll use this BQH2 extruder here for an example, but when it's setups like this and the Hemera and this, if you're using the direct feed setup directly into a hot end, you have to pretty much mount the whole thing hanging off the front of your X carriage. So depending on how your printer is set up, a lot of the time you are going to lose either X travel or Y travel, depending on your motion system. Some motion systems such as Core XY will impact it more than say a Cartesian style printer. And also all the weight is now going to be front hanging off your carriage. I like the setup personally on the afterburner where the hot end is not directly attached. This allows us that since we have more of a space, we can mount this so that the weight of the motor is 
over the carriage to kind of shift that center of gravity back and make it a little bit more stable. Now you do have the option of running this in the Bowden setup. Mine does have a Bowden adapter here. Use either the two holes on the bottoms or the sides to mount it, or if you wanted to mount this to an existing plate, what you would have to do is the plate would go in between the motor and the extruder body. It can't be thicker than three millimeters, I believe. And this would allow you to use the LGX as a Bowden extruder. And when it comes to the afterburner tool head in a Voron, if you want to use that, it's direct drop-in. You just have to print this one printed adapter and then another piece that goes into the afterburner itself. That drops in. You would screw this to the extruder and then you would install it normally like you would a normal clockwork extruder. It is a pretty much a straight drop-in replacement. It's fully compatible. You don't have to modify the LGX at all. The only real difference is the Bowden tube is a little bit longer because the feed gears sit up a little bit higher compared to the stock clockwork setup. But it's a straight feed path and it is fully constrained. So I had zero issues with feeding, even with flexibles and that slightly longer feed path. Now let's continue taking this apart all the way, cover some more things. Another long screw. These three screws are the same length. This one is a short screw. Now our stepper motor is a NEMA 17 pancake style with an integrated spur gear on the drive shaft. Now you can rotate this. So depending on how you're mounting this in your printer, if you want the plug on the right side or the left side or the bottom when you go to put it back together simply have it in a different orientation it works just fine of course this is a geared extruder we have our tensioning arm here and we have our two feed gears now these have needle bearings inside of them and this is what gives the LGX its name. This is the large geared extruder. So when we take this feed gear and compare it to the feed gear from a BMG extruder, you can definitely see there is quite a bit of a size difference between the two. Now, I really like these larger feed gears for several reasons. One, the larger gears mean there is more surface contact between the gears and the filament as the filament is fed through. This has several advantages. One, with more contact, between the feed gears and the filament, you're gonna have more surface touching and you're gonna have less chance of the filament slipping or grinding when you're extruding. So what that means is if you're pushing something flexible such as TPU or uh, a plastic that just does not wanna extrude through your hot end for whatever reason, you're printing too cold for example, this will have less likely chance of it gumming up, jamming up or grinding because you're gonna have much more surface contact on the filament. Also with more teeth being engaged with the filament versus the smaller feed gears, you're gonna have less likely of a chance of each individual tooth cutting into the filament and shaving off plastic. Now, as you can see, uh, these gears are fresh out of the printer after printing all the test pieces, and I have barely, if any, plastic in them. So there was really no grinding that took place. I had zero extrusion issues at all, and this is printing ABS, PLA, TPU at varying speeds. This thing will eat pretty much any filament you feed at it and extrude it consistently. Now assembling this is relatively simple. Both gears are the same, so when you drop them back in, they don't have to go back in the exact same spot. You do have to be careful of this little spring pin here. That This is sitting in the first notch here with this gear sitting below it, and it should fit snugly over this raised portion on the stepper motor. This really helps ensure that everything is lined up and there's no misalignment issues with the extruder to the stepper motor. Take our latch arm, put it back in, and push both halves together. Now you do have to ensure that the little spring is sitting on top of the tensioning arm. And make sure the ratcheting mechanism works and put your two screws back in and your adapter plate. And that's a quick look on the inside of the extruder and how it works. 
and some things I like about it. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to the plug here on the separate motor, it does not come with an adapter. So if your printer is like a Creality or uses the plug-in style of stepper motor, it should be able to drop right in. However, if your printer is currently using stepper motors where they're wired directly into the stepper and the wires either go directly into the controller board or have some wire to wire connector here like these Molex Microfit 3s, you are gonna have to make an adapter here so you can plug it into your system. I really wish Bontech had included something like this with the package, but as it is, it comes with no cabling at all. So that is one of the very minor downsides to this setup. Now I know weight is a common question with extruders. So the stock Bontech LGX weighs 217 grams approximately. And just to put that in comparison, the clockwork from an afterburner weighs 196 grams, a BQH2, weighs 195 grams. Now, again, this does include the heat sink and the hot end all in one. So this is a lighter overall package, but again, smaller stepper motor. And just to throw it in for a full comparison, here is a stock Creality Ender 3 extruder with its stock stepper motor, 317 grams. So it does sit kind of in the middle in terms of weight, especially for a standalone extruder without a hot end attached to it. Honestly, when it comes to weight, it, it has a full size NEMA 17 in it. You're not gonna be chasing grams with a setup like this, but as long as your printer is rigid enough and you're running a modern firmware such as Clipper with Input Shaper, you can still push several thousand acceleration with a setup like this, no problem. So that's enough of looking at the extruder. Let's take a look at how well it prints. So the first print I have was this massive vase at 375 millimeters tall that we printed on the live stream when we installed the LGX in my Voron. Now this was printed with a 1.2 millimeter drilled out nozzle in some rainbow PLA here. As you can see, we got some really thick layer lines. And this print had very little tuning on it. This was just to see how well the extruder fired at pushing a lot of filament through a hot end right off the bat. And well, it fared fine. There are some obvious defects, of course, um, a drilled out nozzle isn't the most accurate thing. Speeds and feeds and cooling might have been a little bit off. And of course, there are some gaps here from a 0.8 millimeter layer height on this model in vase mode. It's not exactly the most friendly, but it handled it just fine. Now, moving on, I did some smaller test pieces here. This is some Erewhon PLA Plus with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And all the remaining prints are with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Just a quick uh, stringing test and how well it fared with vertical surfaces. Print came out pretty clean, a little bit of bulging. I never went through and redid my pressure advance settings, so there might be some slight variation here. Also did this DNA Helix print, again, in red PLA+. Plus. So it prints PLA flying. It, PLA is a relatively dense, hard plastic, so any good extruder should have no problem pushing it. When it comes to detail here, I did do this Vision Bust here from Chaos Cortec. You can get this model on Thangs. And while my camera is not the greatest at picking up reds, there is a lot of fine detail in this model and everything came out pretty well. So far, I'm not noticing any major improvements nor any disadvantages to this hot end. So far, I'm not noticing any real differences in print quality. All these prints are coming out pretty much what I expected to versus the previous hot end and extruder setup on this printer. So the only thing that was changed was the extruder. So what I'm seeing is, is this extruder itself, if you're looking for a massive increase in print quality, you're probably not gonna see it if you're coming from something that already has a good extruder in it. Now, of course, one way to test an extruder and how well it handles with filaments is to print something flexible. So this is a Flexi Wolf printed in squishy TPU. And it handled it just fine. A little bit of stringing. I am new at printing TPU. This is only like the second or third thing I've ever printed in it. And I don't have a full profile for this printer yet. So a little bit of stringing is to be expected, but all in all, it handled pushing the TPU just fine. But this is a small TPU print. Let's do something bigger. This is a wheel printed in TPU with 5% gyroid infill. The hub itself is black ABS. This is Matter Hacker's build ABS. So, of course, it handles ABS just fine as well. 
but this print came out just fine. So judging from print quality, just on some comparison prints, it's kind of hard with this extruder, simply for the fact that it's a good extruder. So comparing it to other good extruders, you're not gonna see the massive increases in quality if you were coming from something such as a basic setup such as this. Now lastly, just a consistency comparison. Now this was a cube that I printed, again, in the Matter Hackers Build ABS, and it's just a straight flat walled cube with consistent settings. I do have a little bit of cracking. I forgot to close the printer up. It's a little bit of layer adhesion issues, but it's ABS, open air, it kind of happens. So just comparing to other prints that I have done with this style of setup, the extrusion consistency is roughly the same, if not ever so slightly better. And I can kind of chalk that up to the larger gears with the more consistent engagement with the filament versus the narrower gears of a stock BMG setup. So when you have more teeth engaging with the filament throughout the pushing of the filament through the extruder, you should see less minute variation in the feeding. So it should lead to slightly more consistent extrusion. But unless I pull this under a microscope, I don't think I'm actually gonna notice any detail to the naked eye unless you really hit it with some super harsh light directly from above, which to be honest, most black ABS prints don't look the greatest when you hit them with direct sunlight from above. So yeah, it pushes plastic just fine. And there you have it. This was my overview and initial impressions of the Bontech LGX extruder. All in all, I think it's a great option, especially for those that are looking to upgrade a stock printer or building a printer and are looking for a super reliable, dependable, and consistent extruder for their build. For those that are already running a printer with a good high quality extruder, such as something with a dual geared setup, such as a Bontech BMG, for example, you may not notice any super massive improvements switching to an LGX as your extruder of choice. However, some of the quality of life features, such as the indexable tensioning arm, and more compact design with easy feed and the ability to clean out the gears without disassembling the extruder itself may be worth that upgrade. It really comes down to your personal preferences and what your design goals are for your printer. So I hope you found this video informative. As always, if you do have any questions, make sure you ask them in the comments below. I do wanna give a shout out to Namgria for sending me this extruder to play around with and test. Unfortunately, I think he is gonna want this back at some point, which is a shame because I kind of really like this thing. If you wanna support the channel and the content I create and the things I do, I do have links in the description as well. As always, I hope you learned something new today. Have yourself a great day. Thank you.